This is the African History Class, and my name, Black Rasta. Now, today we are telling you a story, not just any other story, but a story that is about to blow your minds. Today, we are going to tell you a story that is linked to our independence, the independence of the people of the Gold Coast, who later became known as Ghanaians. Today, we are telling you the story that is going to expose so many very interesting things unfolding right in front of your eyes. Today, we are taking you all the way to England, in the United Kingdom, to tell you the beautiful story of a woman who was born on the 15th day of March in 1921. A woman who helped with the independence of this country. A woman who shed off all her white skin and put on a black skin. Today we are telling you about the story of a private secretary for the Gold Coast. Today we are telling you the story of Erica Powell. Now Erica Powell was born on the 15th day of March in 1921. About 12 years behind Kwame Nkrumah. Remember Kwame Nkrumah was born in 1909. She was born in 1921. 12 years after the birth of Kwame Nkrumah. She was born in Brighton. In the United Kingdom. She was a woman who set out. To study very hard. To become a secretary. So she studied shorthand. She also studied typing at the London Chamber of Comets. While she was growing up, all she wanted to be was a writer and also to sit at the desk and do nothing but just read and write. Her family wanted her to do something else, but she was so interested in writing and in reading and they had to let her have a way. Erica Powell went to the London Chamber of Commerce. And over there, she excelled in her education. She was a first class student. In fact, the number one student in her year of graduation. And when she graduated, she quickly picked up a job at the Barclays Bank. And that was around the Second World War, just when the Second World War had ended. And boom, she picked it up. And she enjoyed working at the bank. But remember, she only wanted to read and write. At the bank, she had the opportunity to sit idle somewhere and then read. But most of the time, she would be called upon to write this, to say this on the phone, and to do that. And she felt that it was a distraction to what she came out initially to be. The secretary, the writer, the author. Erica Powell, in 1952, saw an advert in the newspapers. And it was an advert that was looking for a secretary to work with the governor of the Gold Coast. She started reading about the Gold Coast to find out exactly what the Gold Coast was all about. She realized that it was a colony of the British. 
and she realized that it was called the Gold Coast because of the amount of gold people saw, colonially saw, on the shores and the coasts of that beautiful country. She realized that the Gold Coast was in Africa, several miles away from Britain. She became so interested in the life and stories of the various ethnic groups of the Gold Coast. And immediately she applied. When she applied, fortunately for her, she was invited to come over for an interview. And in her own biography, she said that she got the job because of a sexy swimwear she put on. She was a very sexy woman. Very beautiful woman. Very pretty by all standards. And when she put on her swimwear, she could pass for a beauty queen in a certain kind of beauty competition. Erica Powell. Now here the interesting thing. Erica Powell had been involved in a failed relationship whilst in England. And it broke her heart. She wanted to leave England and start her life elsewhere. So when the chance of going to the Gold Coast came, she grabbed that opportunity and hit the nail right on the head. In 1952, she found herself in the Gold Coast. And she was a secretary to Sir Arden Clark. Sir Arden Clark was the governor of the Gold Coast at that time. And when she arrived, she had an interesting relationship with the governor. They worked very hard. Two years later, her life changed. Whilst in the office of Sir Arden Clark, a gentleman came in, tall, slightly bald-headed, handsome, immaculately dressed, and spoke so courageously. This was Kwame Nkrumah. When he came and spoke and went away, she asked the governor, Sir Arden Clark, who was that gentleman who just came in? And the governor said, that is Kwame Nkrumah. You are going to meet him over and over. You just came. This is the backbone of the independence struggle of this country. If this country ever gets independence, it's because of this man. He's so brilliant. He's so sharp. He hardly greets people on the street because he's rehearsing the notes that he keeps writing every now and then. Some people might see him to be rude, but when he finishes rehearsing his notes, he is the most sociable person you will find. But you are going to be meeting Kwame Nkrumah at a time that would interest you because he's going to be coming here again for a certain high-profile meeting. Erica Powell, yes, Erica Powell, listened to the governor and smiled. In her mind, she was not interested in meeting Kwame Nkrumah. After all, when Nkrumah came into the office for the first time, he just greeted them casually without looking at anybody. He walked straight into the office of the governor. This guy looked like an arrogant man. He stayed in the office for some time. It wasn't long. And then he decided to move out. In 1954, this was what happened. Her first encounter with Kwame Nkrumah. And that same year, 1954, she was sacked by the governor, Sir Arden Clark. Why was Erica Powell sacked? Simple. She had become so close to Kwame Nkrumah to the point that they started suspecting that there was a relationship. Can I rewind a little bit? In 1954, when Erica Powell met Kwame Nkrumah, she was actually secretly blown away. But something inside her told her that, no, this guy is arrogant. Look how he casually greeted us and walked away. Other people from this Gold Coast country, when they meet us, they greet us, they show us a lot of respect. But this one thinks he knows too much. 
two days later after the first meeting with Nkrumah, Nkrumah phoned her and asked her if he could have dinner with her. Interesting. So she told herself, oh, so he actually noticed me. Remember that we are talking about a very beautiful English woman, Erica Power. She believed in her beauty. She believed no man would ever see her and walk away without asking for her contact. So when Kwame Nkrumah came in and casually walked out, her ego was bruised. But she won the game. After all, Kwame Nkrumah now called her and asked her if they could go out for dinner. And she said, well, I would have to ask permission from my boss, the governor, and I'll get back to you. And when she went to ask, say, Arden Clark, what did Arden Clark say? He said, hey, he's a very nice person to be with, but he's extremely lonely. Very, very lonely. He doesn't seem to have any woman around him. And at the same time, he is a little too engrossed in his reading. So every time he ignores everybody, picks up his book, he will read as if the book was the only thing that existed around him. So get ready to meet a man who is very lonely. Erica Powell would not give up. She called Kwame Nkrumah back and said, well, I've agreed. Where will the meeting be? Nkrumah said, in my house. Wow, in your where? Your house. Erica Powell got ready. She chose the sexiest dress she could find. For what reason? You know, and I know, this was a lonely man. The backbone of the independence struggle of the Gold Coast. So she went to visit Nkrumah. In her own autobiography, she wrote that Nkrumah was a nice person to meet. They spent the whole night talking. And he was so interesting. It looked like he knew everything about England. And he knew everything in the world. Unlike what the governor told her, she never found Nkrumah boring. He put aside all the books. And listen, you remember Eric Powell set out to be a secretary. So what? She could read and write. The governor said Adam Clark had forgotten that these were two people who were so interested in reading and writing who were meeting. So when they met, they talked about so many different books they had read together. This one read this year, that one read that year, and they shared information. The whole night, they talked and talked and talked. That was the beginning of a beautiful relationship. When Sir Adam Clark realized that she was becoming so, so engrossed with Kwame Nkrumah, he got alarmed and called the Queen of England and said, I think that this young lady who joined us here is beginning to fall in love with the leader of the independence struggle. Is dangerous for us. She was fired. She was fired. And when she was dismissed, she went back to England. Because technically, once you are fired, you have to return to England. When she got to England, one year later in 1955, Nkrumah invited her back to the Gold Coast. And she became a personal secretary to Kwame Nkrumah in 1955. Check the dates very well. She arrived in the Gold Coast in 1952. Two years later, she was dismissed. All because she had developed a certain strong relationship with Kwame Nkrumah. A year later in 1955, she returned to the Gold Coast. Two years later, the country called the Gold Coast became independent in Ghana. And Erika Power continued to work with Kwame Nkrumah. Hey, she wrote a lot of the biographies of Kwame Nkrumah. In fact, she was a ghost writer for Kwame Nkrumah. We got to know this later, much later. But she wrote 
a lot of the biographies of Kwame Nkrumah. She was the one who wrote everything. She got so close to Kwame Nkrumah. And I'll tell you something. They were so close. They worked for so many years until 1965. Officially started working in 1955. Officially stopped working in 1965. A year later, Nkrumah was overthrown. In fact, she wrote a book, her own biography called Private Secretary, Female Gold Coast. Nkrumah stopped her from publishing the book. You know why? She included personal letters that Nkrumah wrote to her, romantic letters. And recently, the BBC aired some of those wonderful letters. Nkrumah seemed to be joined with this woman in a certain romantic affair. Kwame Nkrumah was married. Yes, he got married to the beautiful Fatia Ritz, who later became Fatia Nkrumah. But Fatia never spoke a word of English. She was far younger than Kwame Nkrumah. In fact, even younger than Erika Powell. But she agreed to marry Kwame Nkrumah after other Egyptian ladies refused to marry a certain strange man when they were approached on behalf of Kwame Nkrumah for marriage. Nkrumah married a woman who couldn't speak English. So most of the time they were in the house while she was watching TV. He was reading his books. They hardly spoke. They used sign language. That was why it was said Nkrumah was overly lonely. His loneliness was cut short and improved by Erika Power. And they grew so close to the point that when Nkrumah was even in exile in Guinea, Nkrumah could write to her in England to get him a bottle of wine, to get him some kind of food or drink or biscuits so that somebody would bring all the way from England to Kwame Nkrumah when they were coming. That was how close they were. They shared some very personal times together in writing to each other. And Nkrumah once told Erika Powell, are you aware that I got married not for myself, but for Africa? In fact, she always respected Fatia and respected Nkrumah. And in her last interview before she died, in 2007, on the 5th of June, in Petersburg, in the United Kingdom, she described Kwame Nkrumah as the best president ever on the continent of Africa. She described Kwame Nkrumah as the most brilliant, and she wondered if Africa would have another Kwame Nkrumah again. She was the one who traveled all the way to Guinea, at the time, Kwame Nkrumah was in exile and gathered all the books Nkrumah wrote in terms of the manuscripts and protected them from the devastatingly bad, destroying hands of the soldiers at the time of the coup in Guinea. And through her, now we are able to read some of the writings of Kwame Nkrumah, which were never published when he was alive. Erika Power will remain this wonderful woman in our history. When asked by the BBC if she was saying all these good things about Kwame Nkrumah because of their personal relationship, she said that, believe what you may, but the heart never lies. I am a writer, an author. I write what is real and not what is fake. If you see me as fake, so be it. That was what she told the BBC. Erika Powell died on the 5th of June in 2007 at the age of 86 in Petersburg. Today we remember you. Mommy, she pushed away England and decided to stay in Africa. After she moved from Kwame Nkrumah in 1965, 
she went to work with Siaka Stevens. Siaka Stevens of Sierra Leone. And she was with Siaka Stevens from 1970 all the way down to 1979. She worked as his secretary. When Nkuma died in 1972, she personally came as part of the delegation from Sierra Leone for Nkuma's funeral. This was a woman who lived in Kuma, a woman who ate and drank in Kuma, a woman who loved this part of the world called the Gold Coast, a woman who loved Ghana even at death. It was rumored that she wanted to be buried right here in this country today called Ghana, but she wasn't buried here. Today we remember you. In fact, because of her contributions to the people of the Gold Coast. The British honored her with an MBE, the most excellent order of the British Empire, and also an OBE, Order of the British Empire, in 1959 and 1960. Today we remember you, Mame. Mame, today we remember you, Uniyaminko. In the bedding of knowledge, I ask you, how would the life story of Erika Powell impact your own life in present times, in contemporary times? In the burden of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know, what would you do? Be an enemy or lay a mini or bafe, you zoom the Kagani, Mezaka, Yin, Yea, and Pabango, Bukaya, Nang, Fifi, Ayena, Nukaina, Banaem, a bay then, Banaem, a bay abade, Lele and Jiman singer, Bekone, Lele and Jiman singer, Berry. It's been the African history class. And today, we've been talking, Erica Power. There's a street that has been named after this great woman right here in Accra is called the Erica Powell Street. If you haven't been on that street, go check it out. It's just around Mataheko. This has been the African History Class. Remember to subscribe to our channel where we bring you very interesting African histories, authentic stories that will uplift you body, mind, and soul. This is the African History Class. Yeah, when I'm gonna cover with Lanoa. Hey, 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 hey,